Chiapas, Mexico a few weeks ago, uh, and m maybe make one quick apology as well. I'm going to have to face this way because in the uh, in the wonderful works that Matthew and Jesse did, it has um, this screen is not going to be working because we sacrificed some of those outlets, uh, and I'll also need to like make a signal or something for Jesse. So get used to either seeing me make some strange signal or asking Jesse to advance through like 50 slides. So I apologize for that in advance. Uh, and let, with that, let's, let's get in because I know we're gonna run out of time very quickly. Um, so as many of you are aware, about two weeks ago, maybe, maybe we would have left three weeks ago tomorrow, uh, I went with brother Robert and sister Kathy Moore, uh, former members here who we all know and love, I'm sure, uh, to Chiapas, Mexico. We had initially had this trip planned for 2020. We started planning in the later half of 2019 to go there. Uh, Brother Robert has been going to Chiapas for over 20 years now. I believe he said his first trip was in 2001 uh, and has made a lot of connections there. Um, one very wonderful gentleman named Elvair um, has, has very graciously um, been our host. Uh, he's, he's very well connected with the churches and the people there uh, in and around the, the Chiapas area. I'll show you kind of where we were and explain a little bit of the geography and things like that in just a moment, uh, but very thankful for the time that our brother Elvair had. Uh, Elvair himself actually is an is a English teacher. Uh, he was formerly an English teacher at the college, the university there in San Cristobal, the city that we were at within Chiapas. Uh, now he has his own business there, uh, but wonderful to have someone who is very fluent in English, who was able to have us in their home for the whole time, who was able to translate, you'll see some pictures of that later, um, all the lessons when bro Brother Robert spoke. But we were very blessed and able uh, to be able to go do that work after, um, I guess what you could say was a, a three-year delay to finally get there. It was, it was very encouraging to finally go. Um, so we've titled the lesson, um, The Work in Chiapas. Um, there is a young church that's there in Chiapas um, with about 50 members or so. And I can tell you that all 50 members of that congregation, to the best of their ability, were there every moment that we were in service. We had a gospel meeting. That was the reason for the work that lasted from Wednesday evening, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, each night we met at 7 p.m. Uh, and the work was from 7 until 8.30 and it usually went a little over. We, we started early every time as well, and then everyone ultimately, um, after every evening, ultimately ended in um, at least a meal, but most of the time a meal and a Bible study, but at a minimum a, a meal and, and, and biblical and spiritual talk um, with brothers and sisters inviting us to their home. Um, so some encouraging things that I'll share. I have some wonderful pictures. Um, a tip, two tips maybe if you go on any work or wanna share anything, turn your phone sideways when you take pictures, because when that pops up onto the screen, like unfortunately a lot of these are gonna kind of be cropped a little bit. I did my best, I'm not an expert, so you'll lose some of it, but you'll get the gist. Um, and take, take more pictures. I took a lot of videos and um, they're great. I'd be happy to show anyone any of those that we can, um, but I, I didn't have them in here, uh, thankfully given the troubles that we had. Um, we, as mentioned, we had a, a gospel meeting there and the subject of the gospel meeting were the letters to the seven churches in Asia. Um, you'll remember from those, there are seven letters for seven churches, right? Four of those letters each served for their own lesson, uh, respectfully. Uh, and the reason being because there are four letters where churches are mentioned to have good deeds and bad deeds. So we took that time to say, okay, these are, these are all similar. They all warrant their own things. We can see the good things that they've done, and we can see the warnings that were gone to them as well. And then ultimately, the message of to each one of those churches, however, if you overcome, here are the things that will be granted to you. Um, the Sunday morning service, which would have been the fifth service and the fifth lesson that we did, uh, we took the two churches, I believe they are Smyrna and Philadelphia, which had only good things to say about that. Imagine that, imagine um, you know, having this letter arrive to you, your young church in, in, the, in the Asia area back in you know, uh, the late 50s to 100 AD, when it, you know, approximately around that time, and a letter comes to you, you're going to see those letters that were written to other churches as well, right? And you'll see the good deeds and the bad deeds that they've done. Imagine to see yours and only good things are said about you. And it says to continue in the work. You know, it's, it's not over. Continue in this and you can overcome it and you can receive that, that white stone. You can receive that crown. You can partake of the tree of life. You can drink of the river of life, all of those things. Uh, we thought that was very encouraging. And then finally, um, in the last lesson, unfortunately, there was one church, we remember this, Laodicea, where there's nothing good said about them. Um, and you have to take that and say, okay, well, there's some, there's some scary things to think. Are we that? Um, and as we look to a church that was 
um, rising. I, I would definitely say the church there in San Cristobal is growing. Um, their, their work um, is bearing fruit, I think is the best way to say it. They're, they're not growing simply because um, of the area that they're in or anything like that. They're growing because they're working. Uh, but we can use that as a warning, right, um, to say, hey, we're, we're growing now. Uh, but at what point do, do things start to tail off? When you don't see the growth or when time is just coming in, when the world gets in, in the way, do you start to see things tail off a little bit and you become, we become lukewarm, right? And then we'd be ultimately spewed from the mouth of the Lord, just like the church was going to be in Laodicea. Uh, so that was the topic of the lessons. Um, we'll sprinkle some of that in, uh, but maybe we'll start off by advancing one and showing kind of where we were. Uh, so Chiapas, Mexico is in the very, very southern part of Mexico. Um, this is where we were, obviously. And as you get down here, this is actually the, the country of Guatemala, right? So you're as far south as you can possibly be. Uh, all these breakups, if you're not aware, uh, Mexico is divided into states, right? There are 31 states and then Mexico City. Uh, and again, we were down in the, in the furthest down one. I know this doesn't work, but this does. So Mexico City kind of being like right around this area. So we flew from Austin down to Mexico City and then flew down into Chiapas, into the capital city of Tuxla. Um, would you uh, please advance again for me, Jesse? When we arrived in Tuxla, we were kind of down in a valley, and it was 89 degrees. Um, I, was to I was told to be prepared because it was going to be cold where we were going. Um, and it was, um, but the, the reason was is because you can see kind of there in the background, the, the pictures are just not going to do justice to how things look there. Like, you're going to see this, uh, this mountainous area there, and it's like, oh, that looks kind of that looks kind of tall. It, it's massive. Uh, so I assume that we were somewhere around sea level here at 89 degrees. I'm told it kind of stays that way all year long, especially as far south as we are and much closer to the equator uh, than we are here in Texas. Uh, but when we took off from here, we just started going up that mountain. Um, we arrived, safe travels, everything was really good, and we were met by by three brothers. One of them, Brother Elvir, that I just mentioned and then two brothers in Christ, but literal brothers as well, um, named Leo and Dottie. Uh, and these guys are both just, they're, ju they're just pillars within the church. You'll see pictures of them, you'll see their family, uh, and you'll see their mother as well in a minute, who um, has just the most amazing story. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about each of them as we see them further along. Um, but if you would advance for me, Jesse, this is just kind of along the way. As, as we were going, Brother Robert said, hey, you see those mountains and there's like a road right there. He's like, that's where we're about to start driving. And so we did. So we set out. It was about an hour drive from Tuxla to the city where we were in, which was San Cristobal, uh, Chiapas. Uh, will you go for me again, Jesse, please? I'm going to start just doing one. one of the, uh, he's not, he can't see me, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then we just start going up the mountain. So you're going in. Uh, when we initially got up, you know, we're not using air conditioner in the car. We're crammed in there as well. We had all our luggage. There was, I guess, uh, five of us in the car. We're in there tight. We roll the windows down and we just go, uh, you're hanging out the window. And I'm like, wow, this side of me is going to have a bit of a sun, suntan when I get back. You know, I'm going to look like the, the great divide of the, uh, of the ice cream when I get back. But the further you go up, uh, it started cooling off. And I can tell you, by the time we got to the top and got into where we were going, you were, you were putting that window up a little bit more because it had started to cool down. Uh, please advance for me, Jesse. So this is uh, along the way. Um, we get here ultimately as we come into the outskirts of San Cristobal and we go and we have our first meeting and first meal with one of the members there. Um, it was Leo uh, and Dottie's mother. Uh, she had a meal prepared for us there and just so welcoming. I, I, to, to pull into the city and not know anyone and then to drive out a week later uh, with the relationships that we had and the respect that you have and the encouragement that you got from these people and the example it's just, it's just hard really to put into words. But this was a view from her home, again, that where she raised her boys, um, where she welcomed us in, uh, and, and where she will, will work and do things. And she will, I don't want to give away too much on her now, so maybe, a, maybe I'll move forward a little bit. Um, if you'll advance for, for me one, Jesse, this is the building. Um, so the congregation used to meet in a member's garage, and I believe they met there for a couple of years. Uh, they started to outgrow it, and they had some other um, reasons to ultimately move along, but this is where they are now. They're in a rented space. You can see there's like a roll-up door with a little access door right there as well. It's just along the street. You'll be in services. There's boom boxes playing outside. There's people driving by. There's businesses. There's everything going on, and I can tell you, though, you hear it when you're in and, and before. When the lesson starts and people start singing and you're focused in on the message and what's going on, you don't hear any of that. 
um, no matter how loud it might be. I, I can't remember at any moment, uh, every moment before, I was like, wow, this is going to be a distraction. This is going to be hard to get away from. And I never remember a moment when I was in services and I started to think, oh, I wish they had turned that down. I just didn't hear it when I was in there because the joyful noise and things that are going on in the service. But you can see they have pop-up chairs. Um, they're in there. Um, will you advance one more for me, Jesse? I think I might have a, oh, never mind. You, we can keep thinking there. In terms of the building, you'll see some pictures in a moment. That's a temporary space that they're leasing. The members are doing everything they can to build their own building. They have uh, bought land, and now they are working on collecting the funds to go ahead and start working on their building. They're thinking of a lot of creative ways. Is there a way that we could just pour a slab? Could we pop up a tent so that we could start meeting there? and start saving the money that we were spending each month on rent so that we can start putting that towards the building fund sooner rather than later. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, you know, the, the men and the decisions that they're making and the women who are supporting them and their families, um, you really see the family unit there and you can see God's design when you see those people there and how their families function. Um, this is just kind of around town. Again, this, this, this doesn't do justice to how this is. It's just massive. You're already at 6,000 feet in altitude. Um, the days would get up to maybe 70 degrees or so or in the high 60s and in, in the evening um, it's about 40. I should say um, the week before we left I was down with the flu um, and I hadn't been sick in a while so I was really still coughing quite a bit and then you get there and it's 40 degrees at night. Um, we had wonderful, wonderful accommodations but things are just, they're different there, right? Um, so th they don't use heat the way that we do. Um, so again, uh, as, as wonderful it was, it's just different. And, and my body took a little bit of time to get used to um, the cold and things like that. And I woke up the, the first morning and, and you still had a week to go and you're just thinking, wow, this is it's going to be a tough week. Uh, you know, you're, you're counting down or making ways in your mind where it's like, okay, I can make this milestone. We'll start the gospel meeting on Wednesday and then we'll start working. Uh, but I can tell you by the time you get into it, you start meeting people, they're welcoming you in your home. You're not counting down the days. You're, you're, you're saying, how much more can we possibly fit in um, in this short amount of time? So this is just driving along from, from the, the two brothers, um, Dottie and Leo's house, as well as the building. It's, they're, they're in pretty close, close proximity. Um, would you advance for me, please, Jesse? Um, this is on the way uh, up to a brother Elvera's house. It's just beautiful. Like um, I'm, I'm from East Texas, and you can't see. You can see some here, this one here, just the pine trees and all the pine straw and things on the ground. It's just beautiful. It's a wonderful walk, uh, just upset in the mountains. If you'll advance one more for me, please, Jesse. Um, this is a site if you walk up from his house a little further, and you can see uh, a good portion of the city of San Cristobal there. Just, just beautiful, set in the mountains. Um, again, the pictures are kind of cropped and doesn't do it fully justice, but some beautiful, beautiful sites there, uh, and a, wonder, a lot of wonderful things and wonderful work going on in the city. Um, so we got there our first day. Uh, and second day, we were there prior to the meeting, and we used that time to go and encourage and meet brothers and sisters. Um, we really kind of pinpointed out a few people. We didn't know them, of course, but Brother Elvere did. Uh, people who needed encouragement. You know, we, we have a gospel meeting, and we have people who, who we know are going to be here. Um, we should be encouraging each other, but, you know, we don't think, oh, I, I better, better go talk to brother and sister so-and-so and make sure they're coming to the meeting because we know they are. Um, so we pinpointed out some people that, that we, we knew had some struggles going on, and we said, hey, we're having a meeting these four days in a row. We would love to see you there. Um, all, all types of groups of people. You'd go and you'd meet someone, and they'd have friends with them, right? Um, these friends were of another religion, uh, and you'd just sit down and have a 15, 20-minute conversation with them, tell them what work was going on, um, and we'd say, okay, look, we've, we've seen them. We know their faces. Let's all keep a lookout for them in services, and if we don't see them, well, let's go back and visit again. Um, and you, you, you went to see some people and you had an initial target in your mind and you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to see this sister to invite her to, or her to services. She's really having some struggles um, because um, she's having some struggles with her husband not being a big encouragement to her. He's not a Christian, things like that. He's got some struggles. So we go visit her. We see him. And guess who shows up to the meeting almost every night? He does. So you just you just never know, right? Who who, who you're going to touch, you know? And we went and saw them again. The people there are very open. They're very honest. They'll tell you um, the things that they're struggling with. I think that's something we can learn from, right? Someone comes to me. I know I know we've got struggles. I'll be honest, I'm going to hide it. You know, I, I will. I, I, it's just it's just in our nature, I think. Um, and each one of them, you know, they they will just 
they'll tell you exactly what it is that they're struggling with. They're not trying to hide it. They know what's going on. And I just felt so encouraged from that. And, and just imagine what kind of relief that would be to be able to have prayers offered up uh, for the direct issue that you're having. Um, and people who have uh, the problems that I have or that you have are not new uh, to the world here. And there's got to be so much expertise just within this building of the things that are going on. So that was a very encouraging thing to me to hear the people express what's going on. And then just again, you never know where that seed that you plant is, is going to blossom. Again, we went to see her. Uh, she eventually did come. She told us she would be there on Sunday. We visited on Tuesday. Um, she was there, but her, her husband, who was really not even on our radar, came multiple nights, and it was very encouraging to see that. Uh, would you pop one forward for me, Jesse? Uh, we might just kind of go in rapid fire here, maybe give me like 10 seconds or so, and then we'll go. This is just more views of the city here as we were going through um, and encouraging people. Probably shouldn't have got that picture in there. Um, or that one, sorry, I, I wasn't looking at that. There's not actually a lot of advertisements for like alcohol and things like that around. It's, it, it's kind of good to see. They have Xbox there, I guess. I hadn't seen the whole thing. I was just taking in the whole view. Um, but, you know, you, you don't see a lot of advertisements for, you know, what we would, for sinful things around there. It's really just a lot of hardworking and, and honest people. Uh, please proceed forward with me. Um, this is a view of the land that they purchased. So we went up a road that looked kind of similar to this. It was difficult to traverse. It has just not yet been paved, but it will be soon. Uh, and you can see these just mountainous rocks that are here that they've been you know, ex uh, exploding out or working in this quarry. So this is the edge of a already standing business or home or something that's already been purchased. And the land that they have is actually right around here. Advance forward for me, Jesse, if you don't mind. Um, so here we are kind of traversing over there. So you can see the edge of this building here, a huge, huge um, rock here that they will um, it looks like a tall task. You look at it and say, how could you ever build a building here? I have zero doubt that um, if I'm able to go back, that thing will be gone because I've seen the way those people work um, and, I, and I know it will be taken care of. But they, this is their plot of land right here. It goes somewhat into this rock um, and r right now it looks humble. Again, I can guarantee when we go back, uh, if we're able to do that in a couple of years, that this is going to have something going on there. I, as I mentioned, they're still collecting their funds. It's a, it's a difficult traversal over there. One more for me, please, Jesse. Uh, and you can just see, uh, this is our brother Elvere, who, who took care of us there, um, and just the pride that they have and what they've been able. They feel so blessed, and they should, that they already have their land, and now they're working on phase two, right, which is collecting the money to be able to start working on the building. And I can see in his eyes, and I can see from the other members there, they know what's going to happen, right? They just got to keep working, and, um, and in time, they're going to turn that into a, a wonderful building that's going to have uh, bathrooms and kids' classrooms and things like that, which they, they desire to have. So I'm very much looking forward and we'll be praying um, and helping however we can with that. Um, would you please pr uh, move forward again? Um, went around a bit, saw different cities. This is a, a Catholic church. Um, I can't even say, I can't remember exactly, but I know I can't say the name of this city. It started with a Z. Um, we went to another city uh, called Chamula. Um, and it's, it's interesting how you can go to just different valleys within the mountains, and the culture is just completely different. Um, in this city, Chamula, not the one you see here, but uh, we were told, don't take pictures here. Uh, don't talk about the Bible or things here, because they will, they will literally burn you if you do that. We went into a church, um, never seen anything like it. Uh, you had to pay to get in. Um, you had to, uh, or you were asked if you wanted to pay to be cleansed uh, when you were there. You go in, there's a million candles, there's like straw all over the ground. Um, idols and kind of things everywhere. When we got to the front, there was a, um, someone kneeling up there and they had literally like killed a chicken in front of us and sacrificed it there. So it's, it's intense. It's different than things that you've seen before. Um, brother and sister, sister Kathy got out in front of me, but me and uh, two of the brothers were kind of trapped in there and they closed the door and like walked in a bunch of their elders and things like that, blowing these horns and things. So it was, it was strange and tense for a minute, but we got out of there. Uh, but some beautiful architecture. You go in, there's, there's obviously people praying, there's flowers, the most beautiful flowers that you've ever seen. But this is kind of an idea of some of the churches. You'll see something like this in at least one in all of the communities that you go forward into. If you'd advance forward for me, please, Jesse. Um, here we are, we're meeting. Um, I see that we're already at like 42, um, something like 37 or so on the time. So I want to interject here as you can like see the people here two lessons because I think we're on slide like 10 or 40 or something like that. So we can share these out if I can figure out how to email them and you can look through some of the pictures and I'd be happy to show you anytime. But there were two things that looking at these people really reminds me 
that I want to change and I want to work on um, as a member here. The first one is I want to start trying to get to services earlier. Um, as I look at these people, I don't see any reason why I need to be walking in. I'm saying this for me. You can make your own application to it. Everyone has, has things in their life that they have responsibilities. I understand that. This is an application for me. Um, I want to start getting here sooner. Um, we had to call the kids in from playing out. They were there. They were already, you know, hot and tired because they had been there early enough to play and get in that state. Um, you get there, you get prepared, you have responsibilities. If you see someone's not there, you can be preparing your mind uh, to be able to fulfill the responsibilities that they have. I am gonna try to get the services sooner. I, am, I don't wanna be walking in anymore myself at um, 8.58 or 8.59 or anything like that. I wanna be here, I wanna get my mind in the right set. You know, When I've been driving here, I've been listening to music in the car, I'm humming that when I walk in. I was checking sports scores or whatever. I want to get that out of my mind. I'm going to try and start getting here sooner. They were a wonderful example of that. I thank them for that example. Um, the second thing that I want to start doing, uh, I would have tried to do it this morning, but I was um, watching um, them troubleshoot what was going on. I want to start trying to greet everyone here as best as I can. I might not be able to have a conversation with you, but I want to walk by and smile and wave and catch your attention and say good morning and ask how you are to everyone if I possibly can. From the smallest kid here, two years old, I can tell you that kids not more than two, when they walk in, you know, we have it split like we do here. It's, it's bigger here, I understand, it's, it's hard, it, it's small there. The kids and every member walked up this side and everyone that was here, they shook their hand. Every single person, they shook their hand, they asked them how they were doing, they have sayings, you know, blessings and things like that. Every single person greeted every single person. When they finished walking up here, there's usually people standing around. They came back down this way and they greeted every single person. I mean, this is this is a, a, a refuge for us, right? This is these are our brothers and sisters. How many people are in this city? I don't know, eight hundred thousand, a million, something like that. And look how many of us are, are, are here and are called out. Why 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 wouldn't I take the time to try and look at and speak to and encourage everyone here. They're doing that. And it wasn't a point out of um, habit or it wasn't a point out of having to do it. Smiles on their faces. When we kind of debriefed and talked about the last few things, we each got a chance to um, get up and say our thanks and things to the congregation. The thing that I told them I would remember about them the most is their smiles. Put a smile on your face. That's the third thing that I, I want to say. Um, it's so encouraging, you know, sometimes maybe the reason we, we might not go up to someone, someone might not come up to me, maybe I should say it that way, is because I, um, I might not mean it, I might not be thinking about it, but I, I have a, a look on my face that's not a welcoming one. Um, I can still see every one of those smiles from especially the kids, but all the members as well. Um, the way they welcome visitors, um, I know we try to do a good job, um, you know, as I think about me encouraging visitors sometimes, I kind of think, oh, um, you know, I need, I need to do that. I need, I need to go and welcome this visitor because I need to make them feel welcome. I should feel proud that they're here. I should feel happy. I should, I, I should be pushing people out of the way to get to a visitor, you know? So those are some things that I'm, I'm going to take, um, take from that. Get here earlier. Greet everyone. And I'll say as well, um, it'll be hard for us, I understand, but they didn't just greet everyone before services. After services as well, there was a loop made around and everyone is shaking hands and everyone is, is wishing each, each other well and it's very much meant. So I want, to do, I want to do better at that. That's some lessons as I see us kind of running out of time already that I didn't want to miss. Um, there are probably a lot others that, that we can mention, uh, but those are three that I definitely didn't, didn't want to overlook. Um, so here we are. Um, you can see Brother Robert at the front there. We would, we would get up, we would sing, uh, we would say a few prayers, we would welcome uh, visitors and things like that. Then Brother Robert would stand here, Brother Elvair would stand here, we would broadcast, Brother Robert would talk, Brother Elvair would translate. So, so very wonderful there. Um, would you advance forward please for me, Jesse? This is out front of the building. Um, this brother here is uh, a preacher at another congregation within uh, San Cristobal, the city there. Um, I should mention as well, um, there are brothers and sisters, I know you've heard the stories, there are brothers and sisters who took buses for over three hours to get to services uh, during, during the week. Over three hours. Um, these people work every day. They work 
you know, they, I think they try not to work on Sundays. So you'll say they work at least six days a week. Uh, and they took time off from their jobs. They took a bus. They have brothers and sisters that they, that they knew that they reached out to who would put them up and they would stay with. And they came to services. Three, three and a half hours. Uh, amazing. There are brothers and sisters who walked. There are brothers and sisters who took buses. There are teenagers who took buses across town without their parents to be there. And they were there and they were serving. Um, you, you just can't imagine. It's, it's so humbling to see the, the work that they did, the ease that we have to get the services, right? And I get here at 858. It, it's, it's, um, it makes you look at yourself and, and ask if, if your priorities are in the right place. Advance forward, please, for me, for me, Jesse. Again, just another picture of people uh, before services. This is one of the brothers here, um, brother, brother Leo, uh, a great time um, we had with him. Please uh, jump forward one for me. Uh, this is us walking up to visit one of the brothers and sisters for breakfast one morning. Please move forward. Um, cropped out a little bit, but um, not uncommon to be walking through the streets and then see like, um, the, I, let me tell you, the dogs on the roofs are the toughest dogs that you have ever seen. They, no matter how big they are, they would tear you apart if they weren't on the roof. If they weren't on the roof and they were down there with you, they would tear you up. But they're, they're very tough from there. Um, advance forward for me, please. Um, these are some of the brothers and sisters. Sorry, it's cropped out working. Two, two of the brothers, Leo and Dari, who I've mentioned, both have bakeries. Um, advance forward for me, please. Um, so here's some of their work that they're doing on a daily basis, them and their kids. Um, I'm a bread addict, um, so so I was I was in a good, was in a good spot. Um, advance forward for me one more. This is them working um, that done by hand. I couldn't do that with the proper tool to do that, and they're just pop, popping it out. Um, advance forward for me, please. Again, um, breakfast that they had for us each morning, um, wonderful. I want to show uh, advance forward one more, and then uh, this is the view from uh, Brother uh, Dottie's house where we were having that breakfast, and then one more forward. Um, look at that. Uh, this is us having breakfast with, with brothers who have traveled from a long way with Brother um, Dottie's family. Uh, apologize to Dottie if he ever sees this because I caught him in a bit of a compromising situation in that picture. Um, but just wonderful. I mean, we would sit there in those situations like that. Um, you'd eat, you'd get full. And then typically Brother Dottie, who, who, I'd, um, who I uh, have pointed out there, he would sit back and he would look at Robert or something. And he's like, I've got a question for you. And they have difficult questions. They are reading into the Word of God, and they are, they are working hard to understand it. And they have questions that you can tell people have brought in, and, and they're looking for the truth, first of all, but they're saying, okay, this, this, the answer to this is going to have an impact on our members. So I'm, I'll, I'll pose one of the questions. Um, I'm going to give us like six or seven more minutes. That should give us time to, to get out, and, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, imagine this is a church with a lot of young Christians uh, pulled, pulled by the world the same way we are. Um, and they would say, okay, here's a question for you. We have members who would say, um, or who ask the question, what if I'm a Christian and then I fall away? Uh, I, I reject the Lord and I live my whole life away from it. And then I'm dying. I'm on my deathbed and I ask for forgiveness. What, what, what's the outcome? Like that's a that's a tough question, right? I mean, those are those are things, and 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 you think about the answer, right? Um, to to young Christians who would say, depending on your answer, oh, well, I can just I can just leave, and then at the last moment I can slide back in. Um, so um, I'll kind of um, summarize where we left the conversation. Um, we had said, look, sometimes there are questions, and I might not be able to give you the exact answer. But what, I, what we maybe can do when we have those questions is we can ask ourselves, how would we react to those questions? What would we do, right? Because we can be in that situation. Others can be in that situation. So what would we do? So we said, well, for you, first of all, do you want to live your life that way? Do you want to live your life? Do you want to take that risk, living your life that separated from God? The answer was obviously no, right? So me got my part down. Would you encourage someone else to live their life that way? Would you tell someone, yeah, that's fine. Why don't you, why don't you try that? Why don't you, why don't you test God's grace? Why don't, you, why don't you test yourself, right, and see if um, you get the chance to do that, right? The Lord may return. Your life might be taken from you. you. You don't know. Would you tell someone to live your life that way? No, of course not, right? And then the last one, what if someone, what if a brother or sister look around, pick someone out in your mind? What if one of our brothers or sisters had lived their life that way? They've lived their life away from the Lord. 
they're, they're passing away, they call you. Brother Elliot, I realize I've made a mistake. Will you come, will you come pray with me? Are you going to go? Of, of course you are, right? Of course you're going to go and do that, right? So now, who, who's the judge? Not us. G God is the judge, right? And so I, I can't necessarily possibly answer the question for you. There are scriptural things we can look at. We could, we could look at like, um, you know, Romans 6, right? Should we, should we carry on in sin so that grace may abound? By no means, right? So there, there are hints and things that we can get to, but God's ultimately the judge. And so may, while I might not be able to perfectly answer your question, I can tell you how you should approach that question. Um, but there were difficult questions like that. Each time you had to sit back and think, you had to pull out your Bible, you had to figure out how to um, get it in such a way that um, it translated as well as you could. So um, wonderful to see thinking about spiritual things, looking for ways that they can help set the church there on the right path. Um, again, with just a couple moments, let's see what we can, we can get through. Um, you go forward for me, Jesse. Um, here in services, um, again, full, uh, please advance forward for me again. Um, okay, look at this. Sorry, this is just going to kind of be about the trip. Um, this picture was taken. I'm going to mess up the minutes, but the, the time gap between them is, is right. So let's say this was taken at 8.30. We're driving in the morning, 8.30. Okay, we're in the mountains. So this picture was taken at 8.30. The next picture was taken at 8.31. Look, will you forward to the next picture? So that's what it's like when you're driving up in the mountains and you literally go over the clouds. Um, again, the scale, it, the scale is just not shown by the pictures of how tall and how beautiful this is. We were on the way to, um, uh, we go to the next picture. Uh, we were on the way to this sister's house. Um, I'm going to spend the last few minutes that I have maybe uh, talking about her. Um, this sister was the, is the mother of, of, of Dottie, of, um, of Leo, of a lady named um, um, Kaylee, if I'm not mistaken, um, and then uh, a brother named Ezekiel. Um, her story is the most amazing story you have ever heard. Um, I wish I had time, a whole lesson to recount it. I wish she was here to tell it to you. Um, but it's an example of how much impact one person can make. One person who did not grow up in the church, who did not grow up in an area where um, the word was being spread, where the gospel was readily available, um, and then the two brothers who I've said are, are pillars in the church and who each have, uh, have you know, big families are her sons, um, a daughter as well who... Um, is dealing with some health struggles right now, but is, is there as much as she can. And a brother who, if we had time, we won't, we won't be able to cover it. But we went and encouraged, um, and I'll speak, as, maybe I will speak a second about that. But we don't know how much of an impact we can have. I sat in rooms, sat in the services, and I looked at the amount of people that were in there, and I looked at her, and I saw the, her influence, and what she has done has put the path and laid the foundation for those people to be there. If each one of us did that, I mean, we would outnumber. <laughs> we would outnumber the the, the amount of non Christians. If if everyone just put in their family and did the work that she did, she came from a family of ten plus, um, ran away from home, came back, encouraged her family, mother, father, brothers, sisters. Her brother's a preacher now. Her her boys preach and teach. It's just amazing. I'd love to tell anyone the story as we have time. And then the last one we. Um, we went and encouraged her son, uh, who had not been being there, a former servant in the church. Um, and he's just another example of, he sat there and told us, he's like, look, I haven't been swayed by another doctrine. I still believe the same things I have. I know I'm an heir by not being at services, but I have some issues um, with some things going on there. I'll leave it at that in case anyone were to ever see this and translate it. And he's like, and I don't know that I can have the love that I need to for the people there. Uh, and I feel like a hypocrite going. And I could see the tears in his eyes and the honesty to, to be that honest with someone. Um, and there you, you want to, you know, you want to encourage them. You want to bring them, but you can just say, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll be praying for you. I, I will be praying that, that things can change uh, between you, between the situation and everything that's going on so that you can return back um, because there's a family behind him. That, that loves him, um, and it should be an example for the members there, and we should use this as an example for us. If we see one missing, right, if someone is missing, we need to reach out and do something about it. Maybe that's my last point to, to leave out on, is we need to do more in the work. Um, 
we, we, we just do. And, and I, I've, sa- I've said before, I've tried to paint things to myself so that you don't put it on yourself. We collectively need to do more. We need to call. We need to visit. Um, we need to look for areas to help. Um, pointing at myself first, but um, I, I can tell you, we, after, after seeing them, we just do. We just, we just need to work harder. Uh, we need to dedicate our lives more fully, um, as I saw an example there of them doing. And I can tell you, 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 will, see, you will see the benefits. Um, you think about the, the one sheep that was lost, right? One, one sheep out of a hundred is lost. And said, which, which shepherd wouldn't, wouldn't go and find the, find the one? Right? And when that one is returned, there's more rejoicing in heaven over the one that was returned over the 99 that didn't need finding. Right, So we, we just need to keep these in mind. We need to, we need to develop, I need to develop a, a love for each one of you more so than a responsibility as a Christian to be um, who, who I am to you. Um, and I think that this has been a great example of doing that. So uh, I hope you can hold me accountable in my time coming back. Um, I'm sorry that we've run out of that we've run out of time, and I want to be uh, mindful of the fact that we've got to get kids to classes and things like that. Um, but let's let's all just do, do the best we can to develop that love. Uh, it's encouraging to know in San Cristobal de las Casas, uh, Chiapas, Mexico, there is work going on there. There are faithful brothers and Christians who love the Lord. Um, so please be praying for them. Um, I know that they're praying for us, um, and let's just do the best job we can of loving each other, loving God. And if we love God, he will know that by the fact that we love ourselves or love each other as well. So thank you for your time and listening to me babble with that. I will offer an invitation before Brother Kurt gets up. Um, Brother Kurt, we might have a second of um, needing to um, change back over from the mayhem that I caused. So if it's not one that we all know, um, please give it a second. I'll, I'll offer an, an invitation for anyone here um, who, who needs to render obedience to the gospel. There's, n- there's no better time than now. If any of us have drifted away, there's no better time than now. Uh, let's not be the one who's drifted away and says that we can take advantage of God's grace at the last minute. We don't know when the last minute is. God knows we don't. Uh, so if there's any need for any sort of, of help the church can provide, we'd ask you to come forward now as we stand and as we sing.